You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Nagel and Knowles. Everyone has the right to feel physically and psychologically safe in their workplace. The multidimensional team of Nagel and Knowles will discuss the process for helping organizations with this growing problem that we face in our society today. From a simple lack of respect in the workplace to bullying to extreme violence, Nagel and Knowles will create a more healthy and harmonious atmosphere. So now, please welcome Nagel and Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts. Good Saturday morning, everybody, and welcome back to part two. I want to welcome everybody back, previous listeners, as well as new listeners. My name is Robin Nagel, your host of Nagel and Knowles, and we are your workplace violence prevention experts. We're live this morning on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We have a live call-in number. I'd love to hear your questions, your comments, or concerns. That number is 866 451 one four five one again eight six six four five one one four five one all right in case you missed the first part of the show of what we're calling the real deal security minded mindedness segment uh just google nagel and Knowles. this is the easiest way go to bold brave media and you'll see the segments listed there if you have a hard time uh just reach out to me and i can help you find them Now, before I go into the content of my show, I can't believe yet again that I'm starting off the show talking about another mass shooting. I'm sure you've all heard about it already. And I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment on behalf of the team to offer yet again our deepest condolences and prayers to the families who lost their loved ones in Southern California, as well as to the families of the 21 and 60 year old women that were killed in that yoga studio in Tallahassee, Florida and of course the families of the Tree of Life Synagogue mass shooting. I don't have to tell you that these active shooter mass shootings are way out of control. Also, shout out to our first responders. We respect and value the contributions you all make on a daily basis. Clearly many of them have never seen or experienced these horrific scenes. And law enforcement I've seen on television are stating that themselves, 20 year guys and gals that are on the job. And no training can prepare them mentally for dealing with such mass casualties. Yes, some of us get training on mass casualties, but when it's real, it can be unimaginable and overwhelming, not to mention the lasting effects psychologically. Now, having sent all those thoughts and prayers and condolences, I was watching the news last night about the shooter as they continue to investigate his motive. When a mother came on, she was crying and frantic, and rightfully so. I don't know if you saw it or not. But I'll tell you, in watching that, it struck a chord with me. And I'll tell you why. She was the mother of one of the young men murdered in that club. And while crying, the mother pleaded for people to stop offering thoughts and prayers and stop sending prayers. She's obviously hurting. And instead, she wants to see action with regards to gun control. This young man was also a survivor of the Las Vegas mass shootings, if you can believe that. Now, I'm not going to speak for anybody else but myself here, and this is real talk. And I'm certain that many of you might feel the same way. For me, when they show the faces of those people that were murdered in these mass shootings, and everyone before this one on television, and they talk about who these people were as family members, their personal stories, I look at their faces, and my world literally goes into slow motion. Listen, my heart aches, my eyes swell up, and yes, I get pissed off, 
angry and flooded with all kinds of human emotions, like I'm sure everybody else does. So we don't know what to say. What can one possibly say to a family or a loved one? There really are no words. The only thing I'd really like to offer is a strong hug if I were able, say how deeply sorry I am for the loss, and then offer two good ears. I can't for a second begin to understand what they're going through. I look at the faces and think, you know, that could have been my wife, my sons, my mother, my brother, but thank God it wasn't. Not this time. But that doesn't mean my heart doesn't ache and ache bad for those families. So yes, I'm sending my heartfelt prayers and condolences, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure many of you do too. If you tuned in last week, you heard me mention how workplace violence has morphed into any place violence. Look at this week's shooting. Those people went out to have a good time on a weeknight. And the growing epidemic of these shootings is way out of control in this country. Again, our focus is on workplace violence. But these mass shootings, active shooters, workplace violence, all seem to have one common denominator. And I'm going to touch on that later in the broadcast. Now, I'm not going to bore you with my background. You can find it all on our website at nagelnolesandassociates.com or visit my LinkedIn profile. But what I will share with you again this morning is I've been in public safety half of my life, 21 years in law enforcement, federal law enforcement, serving in the Army, and the past 12 years operating in the public and private sectors of security. And those that you do the same, you understand the calling. We're men and women of action. We care about people and their well-being. And that is our common denominator. We provide a selfless service, not a selfish one. Now I'd like to introduce you to my, our team, not my team, Claire Knowles. She's our human resources guru. Claire is a two-time best-selling author on Amazon and truly a master of her craft with over 30 years of experience in human resources. Claire knows her stuff. She's a sought out speaker due to her subject matter expertise. She recently spoke at New York and New Jersey statewide human resource management or SHRM conferences. And Claire does things like look over your human resources procedures from careful hiring to developing respect, your discipline system, doing thoughtful and considerate terminations by providing a soft landing, as Claire likes to put it. She helps with culture improvement, leadership responsibility, and accountability. As you know or may not know, disgruntled employees, angry, vengeful employees, or former employees account for half of the active shooter situations. So terminations need to be done carefully and with a lot of thought. You know, when you kick these people out and you're not sensitive, the leadership is poor, you don't provide services for them, and you think, my God, I just can't wait to get this guy or gal out of here. You shut off their access control cards. You may escort them to the front door and think it's all over. Well, it's not. There's got to be measures after the firing where you can track these people on social media, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on, and then have a plan in place for protecting the workplace from this kind of violence. And it's an OSHA requirement. Workplaces are required to provide a safe and secure work environment where you feel safe and comfortable in going to work. Now let's, let me introduce you to our other partner, Richard Knowles. And yes, that's Claire's husband. Richard is known as a safety guru and is also a two-time best-selling author on Amazon. And Richard also holds a PhD. Richard has over 35 years experience in leadership, safety, and operational uh, business. And he's the point person for our team on that subject matter. Okay, we're getting ready to go to a commercial break. Uh, but before we do, I'd like to invite you to go to our website again at nagelnoldenassociates.com. And don't forget to call in. The number is 866-451-1451. And I'd love to hear from you with any questions, comments, or concerns. And my name is Robin, and you're listening to Nagel Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. 
Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Welcome back, everybody. If you're just tuning in, my name is Robin Nagel of Nagel and Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts. You're listening to us live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Don't forget our call in number 866-451-1451. So before the break, I was telling you about Richard being our point person for leadership, safety, and operations. Richard also developed what's called the process Enneagram. E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. And what is that? This is a modification of the ancient Enneagram that describes how energy flows through living systems. And Richard takes that and helps organizations achieve more effectively what they want to become. And if that sounds interesting to you, then just Google Richard Knowles and his process Enneagram. I think you'd be pretty amazed at this productive process. So collectively... We offer over 100 years of practical hands-on experience. We combine that knowledge together because we want to help create safer, healthy, and more productive workplaces, bottom line. And we know workplaces because we've worked in them for many years ourselves. So we can absolutely identify with the many challenges you all are facing in your workplace. For example, incivilities, unprofessionalism, bad bosses, toxic work environments, poor leadership, negative cultures, bullying, sexual harassment, and the list goes on and on, right? So many of you are probably saying, you know, what's the show really all about, Robin? Well, the main purpose of the show is to really spread the word and help educate organizations and people on the importance of using a holistic and comprehensive approach to preventing, I emphasize preventing workplace violence, not reacting, as well as the importance of situational awareness, which I cannot stress enough in this day and age. And you're gonna hear me talk about this this morning. Situational awareness means you have to know where you are at all times. You have to familiarize yourself with your surroundings and keep your head on a swivel. The prevention of workplace violence in organizations is our focus of discussion. And remember that process for developing a program starts with a comprehensive workplace violence prevention assessment. And you've heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. Like anything else in life, before you know where you're going, you got to know where you are now. You need a benchmark so you can build your road to success. Okay, last week I closed the show, and I don't know if I finished with them or not, where I started talking about the different categories of workplace violence. Well, the FBI has four categories, and I'm going to let you have them now. One. Violence committed by individuals who have no connection whatsoever to the workplace where the crime was committed. 
and who enter with the express purpose of committing a crime. Someone walks into Applebee's, they messed up the order, maybe he went back in and loses it and starts shooting employees. I think you get the gist of that first one. The second one, violence that is committed toward employees or others that provide services in the workplace by someone who's a recipient. And the biggest one I could think of is the healthcare industry, hospitals, healthcare. Those people put up with a lot of stuff and a lot of it goes unreported. The abuse that they take. Other one could be prison inmates, fitness centers. Number three, violence that is committed by an employee, past or present, which targets the workplace or someone who works there. This one's pretty self-explanatory, and I just covered this earlier. And this could be, you know, Robin gets fired. Doesn't mean I'm going to come back tomorrow or this week. You know, I could be stewing on this for one, two, three, four months, maybe even a year later, and come back in. And by then, everybody's forgotten about Robin. Number four, violence that is committed by someone who doesn't work in a particular workplace, but has a relationship, past or present, with someone who works there. And this could be like domestic violence, for example. A woman has a restraining order on her husband or boyfriend, and he knows where she works. He knows what her schedule is. And he knows the place of employment, so he returns to work, and he kills her. So I think it's safe to say that when an active shooter situation occurs, obviously, one or more components of your prevention efforts failed. Don't wait for the incident to occur. You've got to assess your program now, and this is where we can help. Nagel Knowles can help you out here. You just got to pick up the phone, give us a call, or send us an email. So a very interesting study came out I want to share with you. It came out in uh, June of this year. And it's entitled Pre-Attack Behaviors of Active Shooters in the United States. And this is between 2000 and 2013. It's a 30-pager. It's very comprehensive. And I want to share some of the report summary with you. This is coming right out of the report. In 2017, there were over 30 separate shootings in the United States, active shooter. And the largest one ever recorded in one year period. Because I think the FBI started recording the statistics in 2000. And there have been, with this latest one, over 300 mass shootings this year. 300. And we're like 310 days, 12 days, I'm not sure, into the year. And that's almost as many mass shootings as there are days in the year. With so many attacks occurring, it can easily, you know, tell people, you know, the offender just snapped. There's nothing we could do. There's no way that anybody is going to come here and do it, and we're not going to see it coming. These are common reactions that fuel the collective sense. I get it. But faced with so many tragedies, society routinely wrestles with a fundamental burning question. And that is, can anything be done to prevent attacks on our loved ones, our children, our schools, our churches, concerts, in our communities? I mean, everybody is on edge in this country. And I get it. I mean, times have changed for the worst. And, you know, who would have thought? Who would have thought that we go to work, that we go in the store and we're nervous? And I hope a lot of you are taking heed to the situation awareness. Myself and every other professional out there that operates in this space is preaching the same thing. You have to be situational aware at all times. Because when you're alone in the store holding your kid's hand or somewhere else, Nobody's going to be able to take care of you but you. Case in point, you know, there was a security officer on duty at that uh, club in Southern California. You know, people probably had a good sense of security there. But even when you're out having a good time, you can't let your guard down. You've got to be situational, situationally aware. You've got to look at your exits. And it's sad. I get it. But it's the reality today. All right, so we're going to take a short commercial break. But before we do, I want to invite you to go to our website. I want you to gain a sense of understanding from the website. There's a lot of good information on there. We created it ourselves. And it'll give you an idea of our holistic approach. And don't forget to call in. I'm waiting for you callers. The number is 866-451-1451. 
I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions, comments, or concerns you want to share. My name is Robin. You're listening to Nagel Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leib's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. My name is Robin Nagel of Nagel & Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts. You're listening to us live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. But Long made a post on Facebook. And here's what he said. And I quote, I hope people call me insane. He put laughing emojis afterwards. Wouldn't that be just a ball of irony? Yeah, I'm insane. But the only thing you people do after these shootings is send hopes and prayers. Or keep you in my thoughts every time. And you wonder why these things keep happening. Unquote. Now you're going to tell me this guy had no friends on Facebook? I don't know how long it was before the incident. Maybe there was no reaction time. I don't know. But that's alarming and that's something, you know, if we see it, read it, we got to say something. Unfortunately, well-meaning bystanders, our friends, our families, they struggle. They don't want to categorize somebody, me with, you know, that I'm crazy, or that my behaviors are malicious. You know, a lot of us write it off. They may even resist taking action to report for fear of labeling me or the family member as a potential killer. Once reported to law enforcement, those in authority may also struggle to decide how to assess and intervene because mental health today is a taboo subject, right? Like in this latest case, I understand that the police were called out to Long, Ian Long's place, for a check due to concerning behavior. And I also understand that a mental health professional cleared him. So by articulating the concrete observable pre-attack behaviors of many active shooters, the FBI hopes to make these warning signs more visible and easily identifiable. This information, this is not just for law enforcement. This is for mental health care practitioners, security practitioners, parents, friends, teachers, employers, and anybody who suspects a person is moving towards violence. This is important stuff I, I need to share with you prior to us getting into the reactionary stuff. It's important that you understand who these people are and the findings of this report. So some key findings out of the report, 63 of these active shooters examined in the study did not appear to be uniform, like readily identified by demographics alone. Active shooters took the time to plan and prepare for the attack with 
77% of subjects spending a week or longer planning the attack, and 46 spending a week or longer actually procuring the means for the attack. A majority of active shooters obtained their firearms legally, with only a very small percentage obtaining a firearm illegally. The FBI could only verify that 25% of the active shooters in the study had ever been diagnosed with a mental illness. Of those diagnosed, only three had been diagnosed with a psychotic disorder. Active shooters were typically experiencing multiple stressors, on an average 3.6 separate stressors in the year leading up to the attack. On average, each active shooter displayed four to five concerning behaviors over time that were observable to others around the shooter. The most frequently occurring concerning behaviors were related to the active shooter's mental health, problematic interpersonal interactions, and leakage of violent intent. And leakage, we'll talk about in a little bit, but those leakage where they, you know, their behaviors, their signs, the things that they say that we need to be cognizant of. For active shooters under 18, school peers and teachers were more likely to observe concerning behavior. For active shooters 18 and older, spouses and domestic partners were the most likely to observe concerning behaviors. When concerning behaviors were observed by others, the most common response was to communicate directly to the active shooter. That's 83%. 54% did nothing. And in 41% of the cases, the concerning behavior was reported to law enforcement. That number needs to be way higher. Therefore, just because concerning behavior is identified, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be reported to law enforcement. In those cases where the active shooter's primary grievance could be identified, the most common grievances were related to an adverse interpersonal or employment action against the shooter. And that's at almost 50%. I said that earlier, uh, more than 50% of these are related to the workplace. In the majority of cases, 64%, at least one of the victims, was specifically targeted by the active shooter. So some recommendations that come out of the report. Active shooters obviously represent a high risk. They're attacking businesses at 46% and schools at only 24%. I don't mean only, but the point is the schools are reported because of the sensitivity of our children, but it's happening in the workplaces twice as much. You need to engage in active shooter training for all the people within your organization. And this is real life scenario driven training. And you gotta provide resources to employees for, for concerning behavior. You gotta monitor overt threats. Consider implementing a social media monitoring program to identify potential threats. If you have the resource in your organization, that's huge. And this social media monitoring can help us after Robin gets fired. And maybe that's a year that we monitor, I don't know. That's inside the workplace. Outside the workplace, that monitoring is you. You view a friend's post like the long, this long guy, you have to say something. You know, we say if you see something, you say something. If you hear something, you have to say something. You have to invest in security measures and facility hardening such as access control, security cameras, on-site or remote guards. And this is coming from, you know, straight from the FBI. So you know that this is sound guidance. So give that some thought. So we're gonna take a short commercial break, but before we do, I wanna invite you to go to our website again NagelKnowlesAndAssociates.com. That's all one word, and gain an understanding of who we are and how we can be a force multiplier for your organization. And don't forget to call in 866-451-1451. And my name is Robin. You're listening to Nagel Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page -page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. 
I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Well, welcome back, everybody, for just tuning in. My name is Robin Nagel of Nagel Knowles, your workplace violence prevention expert. And you're listening to me live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Don't forget to call in. I'd love to hear from you. I'm getting some feedback from some listeners that it was choppy or you missed a little segment. And it could be you're streaming because we're streaming live. It could be something on your end. I apologize. So let's talk for a little bit about why. Why do people commit acts of violence? And much of what I'm going to cover here is straight out of our guide. What guide? I'll tell you about it later on. Okay, so the why. Why do people commit violence at work? You know, there isn't a single cause. And crime is often random. But there are some common factors. Sometimes we don't even know why. You know, we're left at the end of these things going, you know, what happened? So some of the reasons why could be job-related stress. Could be super high frustrations. You might be vengeful because you got fired or you got rejected from a promotion. These are contributing factors to maybe those additional stresses I was telling you about earlier. You might have fear of losing your job. You know, when these organizations do realignment and reorganization exercises and the leadership is poor and nobody's communicating as to what's going on, people left hanging. That creates a lot of emotions and people fear for their jobs. Am I going to lose my job through this? Maybe you have a romantic interest at work and you were rejected. You might have family or money problems or a combination of them. So who commits the workplace violence? Anybody is capable of it. You know, you see these people on TV, neighbors, coworkers. I can't believe Robin. I mean, this guy was a, a, a regular guy. Seemed to be... You know, no issues, nice neighbor. You know, maybe the person has a history of violence, you know, habitual offender, committing crimes all the time. Maybe they're fascinated with weapons and violence, and they may show off their weapons and talk about violent incidents. There could be drugs, alcohol, you know, that obviously plays a part. Family and work problems. People who tend to migrate towards violent have troubled relationships at home and at work. Poor job performance, maybe some safety problems are common. I might have low self-esteem. I feel bad about myself. I become overwhelmed by the stress. People who can't handle their emotions, you know, they're short-fused, they have low emotional intelligence, and they don't play nice with others at work or outside. So the physical and emotional problems in a lot of cases can reduce a person's ability to control themselves emotionally. And remember, violent people come from both inside and outside the organization. You know, some examples of violence, it's not just the killings and, the, you know, the, the far right spectrum of, uh, you know, workplace violence continuum. You have things like verbal abuse, 
harassment, destructive bullying, stalking, robbery, slapping, kicking, punching, the use of weapons, destroying property, rape, kidnapping, suicide, murder, and threats. So how do we recognize some of the behaviors? This is huge. And this is where everybody's got to pay attention. And this is what we refer to as the leakage I was telling you about, the behavioral indicators, listening and recognizing what's going on around you. And many of you probably heard me say this already, and I'll say it again. No one knows us like us. That's me talking. No one knows us like us. And what do I mean? Well, think about it for a second. Those of you who work inside or outside of the home, you work in an office setting, factory, retail, no matter. You work side by side with your peers and your supervisors a third, if not more, of your day. So who best to recognize the symptoms and signs that my performance, Robin's performance, has declined? My attitude has changed drastically. You're observing these concerning behaviors. My appearance is disheveled. My mannerisms, all this is a concern. So how do we respond? This is what everybody's been waiting for, right? So let's discuss it. As we've seen, these incidents will occur and you've gotta be mentally prepared to react. This is a whole mental mindset thing. Security officers may not be able to protect you as in the case in the club. Unfortunately, that security officer lost his life. And perhaps law enforcement is not gonna be there in time in order to delay the bad guy. And often, in most cases, as you know, these, these acts of violence are done before the law enforcement even gets there. And this in by no way is their fault of the Leos, the law enforcement officers. They train hard every day and they've come a long way in reducing their reaction time. Believe me, nobody wants to get there faster than emergency responders. So once the stuff hits the fan, so to speak, the only person that can help you is you. Each of us needs to take an active role in our own safety. Because once the incident occurs, all the, preven the prevention met methods in your organization, for example, if you have a program, they've obviously failed. And now we find ourselves in a full on reactionary mode. And that's exactly what you need to do. You have to react. So you have two choices here. You can go fetal. You fall on the floor, you curl up in the corner, and you hope it all goes away. Or two, you can stand up, and you spring into action. And hopefully, it's a trained response and not an untrained one. I want you to understand something here. In case you've never experienced anything that elevated your heart rate beyond anything in your life, it's, it's going to change you. When we come back, I'm going to talk more about this. We're going to go to a short commercial break. My name is Robin of Nagel Knowles. You're listening to us live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Don't forget to call in 866-451-1451. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. 
She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Hey, welcome back, everybody. If you're just joining us, my name is Robin of Nagel and Knowles, and we're your workplace violence prevention experts. We're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Our call-in number is 866-451-1451. Give me a call if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Uh, We're coming close to the close here, so you need to call in if you're going to call. All right, so before the break, I was talking to you about taking action and how to respond and going fetal or springing into action. So as I was saying, it completely, you know, if you haven't experienced anything like that, that elevates your heart rate, it changes the way you think and the way your brain reacts. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's gonna dictate how you're gonna react. All right, so let's face it. Each of us wanna to live to see tomorrow. I know I do. I know you do, too. So the training is critical. So the incident occurs. We have an active shooter in the workplace, for example. And now you're startled and you're fearful. Your heart's racing. You don't know what to do. You start thinking about your family. You start thinking that you never paid attention to the exits in your job. You didn't pay attention to the exits when you went into the store, and all this builds up your stress. So as I said, you can either have a trained or an untrained response. And now if you're in an organization, it's, it's their responsibility to create the training, the realistic training for you. And when I, you know, it's not sitting down at a computer annually and checking the block because you uh, watch some scenarios or or did some training on active shooter, that is not gonna cut it. So let's look at the untrained response first. You're definitely gonna panic, rightfully so. Your disbelief is gonna set in. Now you're in complete denial. You cannot believe this is happening there, where you are, in your workplace. And then finally, you feel helpless. You know, a sense of helplessness sets in. You know, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. And then, of course, there's the trained response, and that's the preferred, right? You know, and if you're an individual, you have to be vigilant, and that's training yourself. And the way you train yourself is to be vigilant. You know, you keep your head on a swivel, pay attention to these things that I talked about. So some trained responses are going to be You know, you're going to feel anxious, obviously, but you're going to begin to recall the training that you have. That's what happens when you do training repetitively. You begin to prepare mentally, and now you're ready to commit to act. And, you know, it's not about minutes. It's about seconds. You know, I mentioned doing the training annually is not going to cut it. You have to try to remain calm. And those who are trained, you know, if if you see, you know, Sally, you know, She's got her stuff together. She looks like she knows how to react. There's no doubt that I'm going to look to her and, you know, employees are going to look to her, visitors, vendors, you know, to take action. So you got to remain calm and gain an understanding as to what's going on, even the trained response. Serious reoccurring training is the key to survival here. Look at our armed forces, for example. The Army, all they do is train. I'll use that as an example. I spent 21 years training, training, training during peacetime. And we said and say, the more you sweat during peacetime, the less you bleed in combat. And so it's the same out here. 
know, the more you train, the less likely you're going to be a victim. Our country is the strongest and most powerful in the world, and that's due to the fact that we're prepared, uh, prepared and we're trained and ready to meet any adversary. My point here is you have to train for active shooter scenarios. The more likely you are to react appropriately and survive, you know, the likelihood you're going to survive. Okay, so let's switch gears here for a little bit. So right now, I'm going to share more of a personal introduction of the team as it relates to our collective work. And we use what we call the penny metaphor. Now, if you look at a penny, you'll see the Lincoln Memorial on one side and a picture of Abraham Lincoln on the other. Now, Claire and I like the two sides of that penny. Claire addresses the psychological culture side, which represents the head of the penny. And this is the people or the human resources component, if you will. I, on the other hand, address what we refer to as the hard stuff. This is the physical security, building structures, infrastructure, tactics, techniques, procedures, with the ultimate goal of protecting people and securing assets. And this represents the backside of that penny, that structure. I'm the point person on the safety and security aspect of our business. As part of our workplace violence prevention program, I handle such things as vulnerability assessments, including assessing, addressing physical security measures like access control, visitor management systems, high-risk terminations with uh, human resource, for example, uh, communication protocols, emergency action drills. You know, for example, how do we notify employees of an active shooter incident versus a fire? You know, pulling a fire alarm to let everybody know there's an active shooter is not a, a recommended course of action. You have to differentiate the alerts. You know, I also help to revitalize workplace violence programs from a security standpoint, and of course, active shooter training and protocols. Now, Richard is like the copper of that penny. He binds the two sides together through effective leadership. So you get a sense of how we work here. All right, so the Department of Homeland Security identifies three courses of action. That's run, hide, or fight. I recently read something where somebody was saying, you know, we should change it to avoid, deny, and defend. I mean, come on. You know, my two cents, if it's not broken, don't fix it. We got enough to think about, you know, the, the run, hide, fight. When we get it in our mind, you know, we're going to remember that. It's, it's plain and simple. All right, so let's talk about the run. I'm not trying to scare anybody here, but if you commit that you're going to run, then you've got to run if you have the opportunity and you run like hell. And you keep running, you don't stop, you don't look back for anybody. You have to leave your personal belongings behind. Um, if at all possible, help others. Maybe handicapped, people that went fetal, you know, remove wounded personnel. All this stuff is located in our book, by the way. So you have to take a look and it's also available online. All right, so let's say you decide to hide. If you're going to hide, you've got to shut all the lights, the blinds, uh, create barricades with furniture, silence your cell phones, turn off TVs and radios if at all possible. You know, try to communicate with 911 as quiet as possible. Maybe you can hold up a sign at a window and remain there until the police clear the building. Don't get up, look around, wonder what's going on just because you haven't heard any gunfire. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. 
Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Sorry if uh, we got interrupted there. So there's a lot of information I'm covering here, and I know I'm sailing through this stuff, but I want you to request a booklet, the guide. All the information is in there. You're going to be super happy with it. My name is Robin with Nagel and Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts, and you're listening to us live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So this is our last commercial break. I'm going to give you a couple of uh, things to do under the fight scenario of the run, hide, and fight. So if you decide to fight, this is about violence of action. This is not feely, touchy. I've read some stuff where people say, oh, you don't want to kill anybody. Listen, it's, it's about survival here. You know, you got to grab whatever you can that's around. Weapons, scissors, fire extinguishers, staplers, chairs. It doesn't matter. you got, you got to take action. you got to disable this bad guy. you got to distract him. And it's great if you have a whole crew. If you're in a, in a, you know, an area with everybody else, then you got to come together. These are just some examples. This is our last segment. We're going to run out of time. But before we do, I was talking about the booklet or the guide. I'm sorry. And we feel it to be an amazing resource. And the feedback we've received from it has been overwhelming. We spent a lot of time, Dick, Claire, and I, putting all this together, you know, that collective effort I was telling you about. And uh, there's a lot of good information in there. And the, the guide is called The Guide to Reducing the Work, uh, the Risk of Workplace Violence. I'm sorry. The Guide to Reducing the Risk of Workplace Violence, The Absolute Essentials. That's the name of the guide. And all you got to do to secure a free copy, we'll send out one free copy per requester, is you got to visit our website, www nagelknowlesandassociates.com or you can google Nagel and Knowles and I'm sure the, the link will pop up I did it myself, I googled it just google Nagel and Knowles and you'll get the link uh, for the website now once you're there at the top of the website you're going to see a, a green box and it says contact us for a free consultation and that in turn is going to launch you to the bottom of the page in the contact us portion. And all you have to do is fill in the box with your name, your email address, and a short message on why you're interested in receiving a copy. Now, if you don't put anything in the box, we're still going to send you a copy. And we're going to send it out to you free. We're going to pick up the postage. Now, if you read it and you decide you want more copies for your organization or you'd love to give it to somebody for a gift, just contact us and we'll have to discuss invoicing at that point and we'll send you out additional copies for your team. You know, I hope that in part one and part two of the segment that you took away a lot of information. I know it's a lot, um, you know, it's like, shoving 10 pounds of garbage in a five pound bag. And I could talk to you for days on end, you know, in the hopes that some of the information I give you is gonna help save you or a loved one. It's been a pleasure for me to be your host of the Nagel Knoll Show this morning, as well as last week. And I hope that you enjoyed the real deal security mindedness segments that you take away a lot of information. And, and really, we want you to 
request one of these booklets. We have a bunch. A lot of people were getting a lot of great feedback. And perhaps you're thinking to yourself, maybe we should call Nagel and Knowles. After all, it's a free consultation where we're just going to have a discussion. We want to find out what's keeping you up at night. You know, what challenges are you experiencing in the workplace? You know, how, how do I fix my culture? How do I build a workplace violence prevention program? You know, as you look at our work, you know, there's always leadership failures. There's safety issues. You know, we have six deliverables that we offer. The security assessments, safety and operations, real leadership, human resources, the full range of workplace violence prevention programs. You know, we help build them. We help take them off the shelf, revitalize them. We do training and development, workplace culture, improvement and accountability. That's our six deliverables. That's where we put all of our focus. That's what you're going to find in the book. I know you're going to enjoy it. Uh, didn't, I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to get any calls. And uh, remember, every day is a gift. Hug and kiss the ones you love and hold them tight. Sadly, in today's society, we never know if we're not going to be able to do that again. Continue to pray for the families, because I certainly will. You know, we look forward to connecting with you on LinkedIn or answering your emails. And don't forget to join Nagel and Knowles next week, same time, 9 o'clock in the morning, on Bold Brave Media. Station 100 for another powerful segment on workplace violence prevention. And next week, Claire Knowles is going to be talking about a very important topic, sexual harassment prevention. Huge problem in the workplace. And I'm sure you're going to like that. Again, my name is Robin. It's been my pleasure. And I want to thank you all very much for your continued support and listening to our show. We're super excited about it. And we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thank you very much. Remember to stay vigilant. Be familiar with your surroundings. Protect yourself, protect your family, protect your coworkers, your employees, and be safe out there. Listen each week for answers to all of your workplace violence concerns here on Nagel and Knowles. If you require help in your workplace setting, contact Nagel and Knowles at 716-622-6467 or log on to NagelKnowlesAndAssociates.com. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.